Hi, today I want to discuss with you one of the more difficult to interpret techniques of 133, the Durchtritt or Durchtreten, which can be translated as tread through or stepping through. First, I'll show you the relevant passages of the manuscript, then I'll summarize a couple of interpretations and conclude with my own take on the play. So, let's begin. The Durchtritt appears on two different occasions in 133. The first is on folio 2v, we find ourselves in an underbind on the outside, after we have fallen under from first ward against half shield. There, we are given three options to deal with the rebinding and stepping of our opponent. Mutatio gladii, Durchtreten and a wrestling action. The play continues illustrating what happens if we do nothing, which is an incoming shield strike. The second time Durchtreten is advised, it is actually depicted in the images. The play begins on folio 9r with Schützen vs. Second Ward. The priest reacts by placing himself in a similar manner. It states that both have three options, but the one conducting the obsessio would be the first to act. The first option is pressing down the sword and then Durchtreten. The second is a strike on the right side and the third a strike on the left side, which is usually conducted by the common fencer. On 9v upper plate we are told that here the scholar performs the Durchtritt. What follows is a repetition of the two other strikes which are possible and a counter of these two which we can discuss in another video. Okay, let's have a look at interpretations. First, let me say that all of these are valid and interesting conclusions and only help to advance our thinking on the matter. The first very common interpretation of the Durchtreten on 9v is quite similar to the play of Duplion in the Lichtenauer tradition. As we get sideward pressure in the bind, the sword suddenly is no threat to us anymore. Therefore we are safe to attack around it while a buckler amplifies the shift of their weapons to our right. And we step to our left. I generally like this technique and you should definitely train it, but I have also seen a lot of double hits caused by it. That's quite natural if both fencers feel the pressure in the bind and they try to plion at the very same time, without controlling the center with the buckler. I don't think it's a technique shown on 9v though. First, in the image we see the inside of the bucklers facing towards the viewer, while with the duplion we should at least see the scholar's outside if he presses the opposing weapons to his right. If I try the typical duplion and leave my buckler in the position which the image would suggest, there would definitely be a gap between my sword and buckler, leaving me wide open. Second, both fencers are depicted to have stretched arms at shoulder height, where Duplian usually leaves the losing party with shortened or depressed arms and a sword which is to our right, so towards the viewer. The second very interesting idea comes from Federico, who has published two videos on the Durchtreten as well in this year. In his interpretation, Durchtreten is an attack through the separated weapons and more of a wide concept than a specific technique. I think you should again definitely train this and all of your techniques against an opponent who likes to separate his weapons and the presented options are very well executed. After all, there is a strong incentive for your opponent to raise his shield if you attack the head. And we all should be able to deal with that. But again, I don't think it's the attack on 9v. The priest's sword and his buckler both seem to be on the left of our own sword at least. And again, the order of weapons is very hard to determine and maybe it's even impossible. The third idea is presented by David Warlings. In his video, he focuses more on the footwork he argues 133 is a right foot forward system and the tread through describes a passing step with our left towards the opponent 
much like a concluding movement uh, in the stressor. While well, finds is a very cool and simple way to look at it, he also presents another option besides the also mentioned Duplion. Here, the buckler is inside, which act would actually face towards the viewer. He presses the opponent's weapons to the left, secures the line with the buckler and attacks in that time frame. Note that this action is very similar to the shield strike from half shield against first ward. I find this compelling as this would fit really well into the structure of 133. The very first play of 133 finishes in a shield strike after right overbind from first ward. Now we see the first play of the second choir, so the second bundle of the manuscript's folios, and it's the first play from second ward which includes a left overbind. I still think that the setup can be optimized a bit, but let me explain. On the lower plate of 9R, we are told that the priest places himself in a similar manner to the scholar, yet we see an inverted hand. Usually this is interpreted to be a clockwise turned hand, but I have a couple of arguments against this. First. We are told that both parties have the option of pressing down the sword and perform the Durchtreten. Yet, if I react against Schützen and bind with my true edge, I'm naturally in an underbind. With my true edge, or even with my false edge leading, I physically cannot get on top without massively repositioning my body and therefore shifting the center. Second, if I'm in a position like this and I have a line, then I naturally want to thrust towards my opponent's face. Yet a thrust is not mentioned in the text. There, it's Durchtreten, a blow to the right, which a priest likes, and a blow to the left, which we are told is usually conducted by the common fences. Third, the scholar clearly has not an inverted hand in the picture. So it wouldn't be really a symmetric position, like the symmetric striking options in the text would suggest. Sure, we can always turn our hand, but that takes time we might not have in a fight. Fourth, with a clockwise turned hand, your elbow is most likely to bend, while in the picture it is clearly straight with the sword very high. A position like this would be almost impossible with a clockwise turned hand and martially unsound. Then again, we should not overemphasize on the exact positions in the manual. Still, the text references the imagery over and over again, so at least some information would have to be conveyed by the depictions. How much? We don't know. And last but not least, Sagi tunic theory, which suggests the priest's elbows turned outwards. Folio 9R is actually the first case after Crooker on 6R, where there is no excess tunic in a straight arm. Since we can be sure that in Crooker the elbow is turned towards the viewer, this suggests a similar hand and arm position. So what if I actually position myself symmetrically to the scholar, but I try to overbind with my false edge? To start, I clearly leave an opening on my left side, with just the buckler to protect myself. So the scholar would definitely be the first to act as the text suggests. But I can actually get my sword on top and press downward to regain the bind. Also, I can easily stretch my arms, giving me more time to react as my opponent needs to bridge this distance. I actually invert my hand in this position a fair bit, like the image indicates. If I proceed with this overbind, then my best three options are as described. With a lot of pressure towards my right, I strike left. If not, I can gain the center. Note how I almost pull the opponent's sword to my left while I press it down, which relates this play somewhat to Fiddlebow. I can perform a strike on the right, which is very safe as a priest likes to teach it. And finally, I can perform a strike without turning my wrist at all and perform the Durchtreten, literally stepping through my opponent. In my opinion, Durchtreten is related to what in the Lichtenauer tradition is called Durchlaufen running through the opponent. A technique of overwhelming and wrestling, as it closes the distance very fast. Durchtreten is similar, 
just not as aggressive and you still have the option of backing up after the blow. Because consider this, in a fight you want to get out of distance safely or you really need to get stuck in and control your opponent until there is no threat anymore to deal with. To clarify, I cannot tell you if the shield schlag part is depicted on 9v. The image is, as mentioned, just unclear on the order of weapons. There are other depictions where we can see a similar position with the shield schlag. And I think it's a lot safer to do so. To conclude, I think Durchtreten is an action of stepping through the opponent. It should be combined with a shield strike for more control in my opinion. And in the image on 9v, it leaves the opponent's weapons usually to our left side. Still, I would not exclude the Deplian like action as a valid alternative, depending on pressure in the bind. Depending on distance, it might also lead to wrestling action, like most of the plays in 133 do. So, please tell me what you think in the comment section. So far I hope you enjoyed the video and can put the technique to good use. Please like, subscribe and share if you want to help this channel. Thank you very much and see you soon!